Hello and welcome to Dr. Doctor. Today we talk about sepsis, a fatal consequence of an infection which kills millions worldwide every year, from newborn babies to the elderly. Before we begin, maybe one of these videos will save your life or help you save someone else's. So subscribe now and remember, always listen to your doctor. So what is sepsis? Sepsis is a widespread inflammatory response in your body due to the presence of an infection. This infection can be bacterial, viral or even fungal. So let's start by defining an inflammatory response. Medically, this is known as a systemic inflammatory response syndrome or SERS. It is defined specifically as the presence of two of the following high or low body temperature, either above 38 or below 36 degrees Celsius, a high heart rate, over 90 beats per minute, this is known as a tachycardia, a high respiratory rate in which you breathe in and out over 20 times per minute, known as a tachypnea, or elevated white blood cells on your blood test, which indicates an infection. This inflammatory response can be due to either an infection, in which case it is called sepsis, but also it can be due to non-infective causes such as trauma, burns and some drug reactions. So what symptoms might you get if you have this inflammatory response? Well, you might feel feverish, hot and cold, sweaty and shaky. You might feel your heart racing with palpitations. You may feel the need to breathe faster and shallower and as a result feel breathless. And you may start to develop confusion or even drowsiness as it develops. So why does this happen? Our bodies have a great number of design features to fight off infections and maintain a level of protection between our cells and the outside world. This ranges from the protective layer of our skin to the hairs in our nose and the acid in our stomach. At a microscopic level, we have a whole system designed for this as well. This is called our immune system. One aspect of this system are small proteins called cytokines, which are released into our bloodstream by a variety of different cells in our body. These proteins help regulate our immune system and fight off infections. However, in the presence of severe trauma or severe infection, their response can become dysregulated and a widespread inflammatory response occurs. This leads to the raised body temperature, our hearts having to work harder and our blood vessels dilating. As a result, we lose water through sweat we become dehydrated, blood flow to our important organs can decrease and we can suffer organ damage. And proteins in our body can get damaged due to the very heat our body is producing. So if sepsis is an inflammatory response caused by infection, which infections can cause such a dramatic response to occur? In essence, almost any infection can cause this whether it be bacterial, viral or fungal. However, much of it does depend on the type of infection and also the person's immune system as to whether an infection develops into sepsis. There are a whole host of common infections that can lead to sepsis. For example, meningitis, severe middle ear infections, even tooth abscesses, chest infections such as pneumonia, or heart infections known as endocarditis, bowel infections such as Shigella or Salmonella, and also other abdominal infections which can be a result of a burst appendix or a perforated colon, sexually transmitted infections and infections which can complicate burns or trauma are all other causes of sepsis. And usually, when the original infection spreads beyond the initial tissues affected and involves our bloodstream, 
that an inflammatory response can begin to develop. So why is sepsis so important? Put simply, if untreated, it will lead to death. Figures in England suggest over 100,000 cases of sepsis per year, with over 30,000 deaths associated to this. Whilst the majority of these deaths are the very elderly, the very young, those who are already in hospital, those with significant comorbidities, it still does affect the fit, young and healthy individuals. Kids are particularly vulnerable, so if your child has any of these symptoms, urgent medical attention is needed. If they look mottled, bluish or pale, if they look lethargic, if they're difficult to wake up, if they feel abnormally cold to the touch, if they're breathing very fast, if they have a rash which is spreading and is not fading when you press down on it, and if they suffer with any fits or convulsions, urgent attention is needed. So how can we stop sepsis? Firstly, recognizing the signs mentioned previously, if you have any concerns, you must seek help. Secondly, if you have an infection and it's not improving on its own, seek help from your doctor. Whilst many infections are viral and need no treatment, if it is not improving in reasonable time and you begin to feel poorly or unwell, you need professional assessment to determine your need for treatment. Finally, if your child has a temperature, is not feeding, is not producing wet nappies as frequently as normal, is not as active as normal, or is breathing more quickly than usual, please seek help urgently. So once sepsis is recognised, how do doctors tackle it? Well, the UK guidelines are based around a principle called the sepsis 6. And this is a quick, easy and effective way for doctors to tackle the problem in the initial few hours. Firstly, giving high flow oxygen. This is to ensure your organs are receiving as much oxygen as possible. Secondly, taking blood cultures. This is a special blood test that tests for infective organisms in your blood. Results often take 48 hours to come back, after which Treatments can be changed to tackle the specific organism found in this blood test. Thirdly, and most importantly, giving antibiotics intravenously. The guideline suggests that this needs to occur within an hour of recognising sepsis for the best possible outcome. Doctors often start with what we call broad spectrum antibiotics. This is because initially it is unclear which organism is causing infection and thus using antibiotics which cover a broad range of different organisms it often gives us the best outcome. Fourthly giving fluids intravenously. Again this is to help the organs of your body cope with the additional stress of the inflammatory response and also ensures dehydration is either limited or does not occur. Fifth we measure lactate. Lactate is a special blood test which essentially indicates how hard your body has been working to fight sepsis. It is therefore useful to monitor to see if treatments are working and also it gives us an indication as to whether you might need more intensive treatment and monitoring. Finally, measuring urine output. This helps to determine the functioning of your kidneys and how hydrated you are and thus it indicates how much fluids we should be giving you intravenously. Once these initial steps have been taken, the treatment then varies depending on the likely causes. You may require further blood tests or possibly scans, sometimes surgical intervention may be necessary, and sometimes additional antimicrobial medications may be added. For those critically unwell, with a low blood pressure, which simply does not respond or improve with initial treatment, what we call septic shock, they often will require treatment on an intensive care unit. 
In summary, sepsis can be fatal. It needs to be recognised quickly and the public, not only doctors, need to know about this. So, please share this video to help your friends and your family understand sepsis. Please do subscribe for future content and I'd love to hear some feedback in the comments section below.